All right, good morning, church. Happy Valentine's Day. Hopefully you have uh, got something very special for your spouse and things are going well. Um, I'm not putting up a PowerPoint. I just, I don't like how just dealing with the, the computers and stuff. It just, uh, I'm hoping you like this better. So thank you for being here this morning. Hopefully you have everything you need. I got my coffee. Uh, quick update on me. <coughs> I still have this little bit of lingering cough, so keep me in your prayers, but I'm about 24, 25 days now since uh, we had COVID initially, and it's lingering. I, I feel great. I, I really do. I feel great. Uh, mentally, I feel great. No, no headaches, no aches and pains, no sickness feeling, but I just have this lingering cough that's bothering me, and, and, and what I've been told is because I keep talking too much, but you know what? It's part of what I do, and... and uh, my wife would probably appreciate if I would talk less, but here I am. I keep talking, and and so thank you for being with me, and I'll try my best not to cough too much into the mic. So <laughs> uh, that being said, um, you will need your Bibles this morning, so make sure you have your Bible with you. I got mine here, and we will be reading out of it, so the, script, the words will not be on the screen, but um, that's okay. We can do it the old-fashioned way, so if you need to pause the video and get your Bible, run out and get that, um, or you can find it online as well. So... <coughs> A couple quick announcements for you before I get started. And number one is we are doing baptisms again. We were supposed to do them uh, last week. Or when was it? Or uh, But because of uh, COVID kind of running through our church here, and people uh, getting well, we kind of shut. We just kind of pushed everything back, and so uh, we will be doing our baptisms and potluck on March 21st. So coming up. So hopefully you are well. And if you are still not well or still in need of anything or, or continue to recover, um, please let us know, and we'll do whatever we can to help you out. You know, we are a family, and we want to help you. Also, I know it's been pretty cold these last few days. So, um, like I said, if there's anything that you need help with, uh, please let us know, and we'll do whatever we can to help reach out and, and give you a hand with that. So that being said, we have the baptisms coming up March 21st. We're going to be doing a potluck that day as well. And so uh, if, if you're feeling good, we'd love to have you here that day. Um, I know we're in phase two now, so uh, restaurants are now starting to open back up, so it is now safer to be able to eat around each other. If you are feeling well, we would love to have you. Uh, and to give you an opportunity to see our, our new uh, refrigerator and freezer that's been donated to the church. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's really neat to see that, and we're hoping to remodel the kitchen a little bit later on this year as well. Also that day, we will be having our annual business meeting. We decided just to push it all into one day and get that happening and so we'll have the baptisms, we'll have food, we'll have the annual business meeting, we'll be able to vote on that but one of the main things we're doing is we're going to be bringing on two new board members and so one thing we're doing that's a little different from what we've done in the past is I want I want participation from everybody. I want you to nominate two people that you would like to see represent you uh, on our board and so we'll be collecting all those names here for the next three weeks <coughs> and so if you're watching at home, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to spend some time in prayer. Lord, who do you want me, who do you want uh, to represent? And when uh, really seek the Lord on this, and if he gives you, when he gives you a couple of names, uh, either email them to me, call them in, get a hold of uh, Glenn, uh, our administrator, let him know, uh, or one way. And, and we'll add them to the list, and we're going to tally um, kind of the people that uh, everybody has nominated. And then based off that, we kind of have to... There's kind of a process we have to go through until we find a couple, hopefully a couple of people that will, that will say yes and, and serve on the board. So uh, help us be a part of that. Um, we're really praying that the Lord is able to do that and, and uh, guide us in the right direction. So um, a couple of things that we have to, uh, that we have needed here at church. And, and if you're staying home, that's okay. But uh, we're looking for audiovisual people, people that know how to run sound and stuff like that or play on the worship team. Uh, if you have a, would like to serve in that way, please get a hold of us. Also, we're needing a few more children's church teachers. Uh, we've had some circumstances change, so if you love children or you want to find a place to serve and you'd be willing to learn how to uh, teach our kids, uh, we would love to have you there as well. Or if you just love babies and want to work in the nursery, we have that as well. So let's pray for our children. Let's pray for our offering, and then let's get started this morning. Father, we just praise you today, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord God. You are a mighty God. 
Lord, we thank you. You continue to, uh, Lord, help us all recover. We pray just for uh, for those that are still have lingering effects. Lord God, my throat included, myself included. Lord, that uh, Lord, that this cough goes away. For those that are still uh, having headaches or exhaustion, Lord, that you just give them energy. Lord, you watch over them. Lord, we pray for our kids as they're going back to school. Lord, as sports are starting up, Lord, that you keep them safe, keep the family safe. Lord, Lord, I also pray that you, uh, Lord, bless this offering, Lord. Thank you for your finances, for your uh, faithfulness, Lord, for your goodness, Lord. And we pray that you continue to uh, bless those that give and support the church, Father. And, and those that can, I just pray that you just bless them this week so they have something special to offer next time, Lord. We thank you for this. Bless now the word in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, today is Valentine's Day, and I've, I've titled this message, Valentine's Day, A False Sense of Love. Now... I am not a Valentine's, I'm not a very good romantic person. Uh, you could ask my wife all these things. Uh, Valentine's Day to me is a day that, you know, it's kind of this made up holiday to guilt us into buying extra things for those we love, right? <laughs> And uh, I don't mind getting my wife things. I actually like to get my wife things. I love to take her out and get her coffee. I love to bring her home coffee. Um, but I, I like to do it because I want to do it, not because I'm forced to do it on a special day. Uh, and I know a certain person, and I won't mention names, <laughs> but uh, they talk about how, you know, if I want to get past her some, I don't want it to be just on pastor appreciation day or month. I want to appreciate my pastor when I want to. And, and we appreciate that. But it's kind of that same mentality is that Valentine's Valentine's Day has become this day and this season, this time where, where we're expected to buy all this stuff for someone that we should be loving all the time. And so, uh, <coughs> I want to do it not with a, some sort of holiday expectation, but with this holiday, what this holiday really has become, it puts a ton of pressure on people on what they really are supposed to do or, or should be doing all the time. I remember passing as a kid. I would I'd pass out Valentine's Day, and and of course I went to I went to Chatteroy Elementary down here, and and I remember um, you know kind of the young grades that Valentine's Day would come, and I was I was very shy. I was even to this day I don't I don't talk to girls too much, anyways, except for my wife. Uh, and so you know I remember you'd pass out Valentine's Day, and you kind of look at all the cute girls or the one or two, and you're like, okay, I want to make sure I give one to them, but so it's not awkward and weird. I have to give one to everyone, and then you have to give them to the boys, and. And it just kind of creates this little bit of awkwardness, especially as a as a, a, a shy elementary kid. And then you start collecting them, and you're like, okay, well, I got this one from Jimmy and this one from Mikey. I don't really care about, is there candy in any of these? And then, oh, I got this one from this girl or this one from this girl. And, and you're like, oh. And But it, <coughs> what it does is, is it's created this false sense of love. And so, um, we've created this awkward day for kids and people. It creates this false sense of love. <coughs> Excuse me. I will get through this, I promise. You know, interestingly enough, Valentine's Day originates really from two people uh, who got martyred who, for their faith and their last names were Valentine. Now think about that. So the way the story originates is, is uh, they, they killed this guy named Val St. Valentine and and then a few years later they kill another one also named Valentine and so I don't want that name as uh, if I'm naming people um, but then they decide to somehow change this event that used to represent and honor these two saints to what it's become today and so uh, you know I, th I think about that Cupid, Candy Hearts, Sappy Cards and all these things I just Valentine's Day is not my favorite you know, my wife could probably count on one hand how many times I've bought her flowers for Valentine's Day. And <coughs> I'll give you guys a little secret. I really was going to buy her flowers this, this year. I, 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 have it, I, I wrote this out on Thursday. I'm like, I'm going to buy her flowers. I'm going to surprise her. It's going to, oh man, it's going to be good. I'm going to earn brownie points. Everybody's going to be happy. And I kid you not, she bought her own flowers. I came home the other day and she had this big bouquet. She's like, look at the flowers I bought myself. I was like, I was going to buy you flowers. She said, no, no, you weren't. So even though I was going to buy her flowers, I <coughs> now I have to change. And so I've decided to go with uh, one of her second favorite things is dark chocolate. So I bought her this nice Hershey's chocolate uh, 
special dark chocolate with almonds and so hopefully she likes it I'm gonna surprise her with it to, uh, <laughs> today at church and so we'll see how that works um, but here's the thing I want you to know turn with me to James 4 17 <clears throat> James chapter 4 verse 17 See, I say this because I know my wife likes gifts, not because she she's a, a greedy person or because she likes she likes to know that I'm thinking of her. It's part of her one of her love her love language. And so, with that being said, here's what James four seventeen says: Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. <laughs> and so. This, I'm hoping, should earn me some brownie points because I do love her. <clears throat> and I like, I like spoiling her and buying her things. And so that's just to hopefully increase this. And so hopefully you've done something special for your loved one and your spouse as well. <clears throat> and maybe you've surprised her with uh, flowers that maybe you don't buy her all the time or something special. And if you haven't, take her out because restaurants are starting to be open and do something special for that person that you love today. <clears throat> All right, I, I promise here we're gonna make it through this. Love is not just an emotion or feeling. We think about this false sense of love that is created by today. Love is not just this, this emotion or this feeling. When you love someone, it's so much more than that. See, it's this covenant that you have with this person that started when you got married, when you said, I do, when you said, for better, for worse, for rich, or for poor, uh, till death do us part. Love is so much more. And I want us to understand that it is this covenant, this relationship, uh, this binding agreement, really, that, that comes between two people. And so um, when things are going well, we're supposed to love them. When things are great, we're supposed to love them. When things are uncomfortable, we're supposed to love them. <clears throat> when things, uh, when, when we're struggling to make ends meet, we're supposed to love them. It's about going through life with your best friend. I think about this, my wife, I love my wife. And she's been my best friend for a long time. We've now actually been together longer than we were apart, which is, it, it, it's, it's fantastic. And I can't imagine life without her, but it's going through life with your best friend and enjoying the ups and the downs and the kids and the dogs and the cats and the animals and the, whatever it becomes. It's about doing life with someone you love, with someone you care about. That's where love is so much more with that. And so my problem with Valentine's Day is that we've made this into a shallow, false sense of love for, with someone uh, for someone that really you should be enjoying every day with. And so don't just put everything into Valentine's Day. And for those of you that went above and beyond, <laughs> good for you. I thought I was going to do something good and get my wife flowers, but you know what? She knew better and she got her own. Um, but also as I begin to think about what this does for my wife and me <clears throat> and how certain days I try to teach her more special, but do I neglect her the other days? And then I begin to think about my relationship with Christ. Do I do the same thing with my relationship with Christ when I know I should be loving Him every day, yet Sundays, Sunday's the Valentine's Day uh, for my walk with Christ? And so that is my question. Am I, are we doing the same things with Christ on Sundays? Same thing we do with Valentine's Day with our spouses or with those we love. Has Sunday become your Valentine's Day with Christ? This becomes a day when we tell Jesus that we love him Sunday. We're going to spend time with you, Jesus. We're going, to, we're going to get in the Word today. We're going to do some worship. And by the way, we should have some more worship recorded uh, next week. Uh, we forgot to push the record button last Sunday. So we do apologize. We will get it figured out. Worship was fantastic. And uh, hopefully we'll have some for you next, su next Sunday. Um, but has Sunday become your Valentine's? The day that you say, Jesus, we love you. See, we have to remember that if we've accepted Christ as our Savior, if we said, Lord, be Lord of my life, be everything coming, I'm going to serve you, then He's with us every day, wherever we go. That means tomorrow morning when you go to work, or when you get up, or you go fishing, or you go do whatever it is you do, Jesus is still with you. Jesus is still with you wherever you go. So, 
We have to remember that if we've, uh, he's with us every day and we should be spending time with him every day. So here's a few thoughts I have for you. Uh, number one, on how to strengthen your relationship with your spouse. And I know, I feel, I look awfully young. I feel, uh, for some of you, I am very young. What do I know about relationships? Well, I've, I've been married to my wife now for 20 years, going on 21 years. So I, I think I'm at the, 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 the threshold. Hold or, or the point where I can share a little bit of advice, but here's a few pointers I have for you and how to strengthen your relationship not only with your spouse, but also with Christ. So we read Psalms 13 this week. If you were in the reading plan, we went through Psalms 13, but I just kind of kept going. And, and so today I'm going to focus on Psalms 16. So turn with me in your Bibles to Psalms 16. Psalm right in the middle. I always enjoy reading Psalm. King David, uh, one of my favorite uh, people in the Bible to read about. And so many times when you just read through the Psalms, you really get a sense of his heart and his feeling and, and really the type of character that David had. And we know David messed up multiple times and, you know, and screwed up and, and did anything that most of us would do as well. But he always came back with a repentant heart to God. And so here we go. Psalms 16, I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, Preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good beside you. As for the saints who are in the earth, they are the majestic ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who have bartered for another God will be multiplied. I shall not pour out their drink offerings of blood, nor will I take their names upon my lips. <clears throat> now, the number one thing that we teach in pre-marriage counseling, the number one thing I can encourage you to help strengthen your relationship uh, and any relationship is communication. We have always said that. Communication is a key to any healthy relationship. So, uh, obviously, communicating to your spouse, communicating to your boss, to your workers, to who you're in charge of, communication is key for any healthy relationship. Also, communication is key in your relationship with Christ, which is why it is so important to stay in prayer. <clears throat> so, if communication begins to break down, there will be problems. But that's not found in this verse, so that's just a, that's just a bonus one. So here we go. <clears throat> Look at verse 1. It says this, Preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you. This idea of taking refuge in you is that I confide in you. Um, when you look up the Hebrew word here, it means to flee for protection or to confide in or to hope or trust in. So look at your spouse. Hopefully you're watching this with your spouse or someone you love, right? And you say, okay, I run to you. When I have problems, I go to you. When uh, I trust in you, I put my hope, I put my faith, I put, I will do everything I can with you. And, and here's what the point is, number one. We have to remember the covenant that we had. I think back to when I first got married. I think back to, um, and that was 2000. So I got married in 2000. I did this on purpose. I wanted to get married in 2000. So when I was old, I'd be able to keep track of how long I've been married. So it's 2021. I've been married 21 years this year. <coughs> and so, yeah, see, I was thinking ahead, planning ahead. And so I think back to that covenant of when we got married. And, and this... It, it, Covenant is more than just saying I do. You know, we think of, we don't really use that word a lot here, but it's one of the things we kind of teach is covenant is this agreement between two parties. It's a binding agreement between two parties. And it says that, listen, if, if, if I do this, you'll do that. Or if you do that, then I'll do this. And we think about how uh, God had different covenants with people in the Bible, and, and he, he had a covenant with, with Abraham, you know, saying that uh, you're, you're going to have all, uh, be the father of, of many nations, and you're going to have all these children, and, and I'll be your God, and you'll be my people. And if you follow my commands, I'll protect you, and I'll lead you. And we begin to think about what this covenant means, and the same thing happens in our relationship with our spouse. It's a covenant. When we said, I do, when we said, you know, for rich or for poor or for uh, sickness or through health or through the good times or through the bad, it'll bring us closer to him, when we, to them. When we remember that we're in this forever, when we remember, we don't begin to look for other options out there. David said to take refuge. He says, I take refuge in you. Do you go to your spouse when you need help? 
think about this. As a guy, sometimes we, we like to try and figure things out on our own. We think that it's just easier that we can do it our own. But you know what? God has brought us a helpmate to help us. It's okay to ask them for help. And on the other side, too. God has brought you someone to protect you, to watch over you. Do you ask your husband for help? I know, uh, sometimes my wife will ask me a question. I, sometimes I feel it's a baited question, I'm, and I, I kind of stop. I'm like, do you really want to know my answer? Do you want me to tr actually try to find a solution, or you just want me just to listen to you while you kind of process through these things? And anyone that's been in a relationship for any period of time realizes the humor between a man and a woman and the conversations that we've had and sometimes how silly of arguments we've had. And, uh, but, but we have to learn to confide in each other. Can they run to you for protection? Do, do, does, does that person even see you as someone they can trust and confide in? Are you the one they can trust and confide in? <clears throat> if we remember that covenant, it will help us get through some of those tough days in anticipation of the better days, knowing that whatever you're going through right now, it's not going to last forever. When you're committed, when you're, when you're committed to that person, it means you can go through anything. All right, now let's bring this relationship to our relationship with Christ. How committed are you to Christ? Because you know what? There are going to be some days that are not good. There are going to be some days that, you know what? I don't understand, Lord, why you let this happen. I don't understand why so-and-so got sick and didn't make it, and so-and-so didn't get sick. I don't understand why these things keep happening. And we begin to question God, but we have to understand that this covenant that God had with His people and that God has with you... On the tough days, we can get through it because we know there's going to be better days. And we know there are better days. We need to remember the covenant we have with Him. Now, I found this. Here's a verse I picked. Keep, keep, <coughs> keep your bookmark there in Psalm 16. We're coming back. But turn with me to John 3.16. Now, this is one of the most famous passages of all time, I believe. And so most of you might even know this by heart. But I'm going to read it anyways. John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And I think this is the most important thing you need to see, that God loved the world. God loved you so much that He gave His only Son. I have two sons. I'm trying to think of anybody I love enough that I would give my son to take their place. And I don't know if I have a good enough answer for that one. And I want you to think about that too. Would you give your son, have your son or your daughter trade places with someone else? Is there anybody you love enough for that? Well, this is God said he loved you so much that he gave his only son. He says that whoever believes in him should not perish. See, here's the covenant that if you believe in Christ, you will not perish. This is the difference. He has, he, has, he has created this agreement. He loves you so much that if you would believe in Him, you won't perish. What does He say? But have eternal life. Do you want eternal life? Verse 17 says this, For God did not send His Son into the world to judge the world, <coughs> which is probably the confusion that some of us have with Christ, is that He only came here to tell us what not to do. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. That's not what He said. He says this, he did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. God loved you so much that He sent His only Son, that if you would believe in Him and accept His free gift, that you would have eternal life with Him, that He would save you. He sent His Son to save the world. That is the covenant. That is the agreement between two parties. See, we have to remember this covenant. It helps us get through these tough times. It helps us go through life when things are difficult. And the same thing as we, as we go through uh, tough times with our spouse and we come out the other side, we get closer, we get stronger. And the same thing goes with your walk with Christ. Every time you go through a difficult time or a difficult situation, and Paul talks about it in Romans there, that you know what tribulations, uh, they produce perseverance. And once we get through perseverance, character, and hope, and so all these things, as, as we go through difficult times, every time we make it through, understand that we have this covenant that God will do His part. We just have to do our part. It strengthens our relationship with Him. That happens if you believe in Him. 
as we read through the scriptures, we learn all these different promises that come with this covenant. The more I study this book, the more you read, you understand that God's given us eternal life. God's promised to take away certain things. One day we're going to have a, one day there's going to be no more pain and no more suffering. <coughs> no more coughing, right? Think about that. These are the promises God has for you. What has God called us to do? Remember, do your part. He'll do his part. As we remember these things, it brings us closer to him. All right, turn with me back to Psalm 16. I'm going to keep reading. We're going to go through this whole chapter. So verses, verse 5 now. Psalm 16, verse 5. Oh, the coffee's almost gone. That means the message has to be almost over. <laughs> it says, The Lord is my portion. I love that verse. The Lord is my portion. Chapter 16, verse 5 of Psalm says, The Lord is my portion of my inheritance and my cup. You support my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. The Lord is my portion. Now try to imagine if we took, let's say I took everything I own. Let's say I took everything here at the church I own or that, <coughs> that we own. And we decided, you know what, we're just going to sell it all and we're going to give it away. And I said, all right, well, so here, uh, you get this. Um, Maybe I take the, uh, the, the, the organ, I sit down, but this is, this is your portion. And, and I take the pulpit and say, Bob, this is your portion. And I take some of the nice chairs and say, this is your portion. And, and uh, we divvy it all up. And everyone gets a piece of country church. Understand, this is the portion that was given to you. I see this picture of David saying, the Lord is my portion of the inheritance my cup, saying that, listen, out of the kingdom of God, of, out of everything that God has, he said, here, this is what you need. This is all you need. Do you understand how important this is? Number two, I see. So number one, remember the covenant. Remember the relationship that you committed to <coughs> and what can, that can be. Number two, remember their value. To understand that David said, this is my portion. This, this portion... It's, 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 it's part of Christ. It's the Messiah. It's the Savior. It's, the, it's from the kingdom of God. It's, he understood um, that the Lord was his portion in the kingdom of God. That, that, that God came to live inside of us uh, and, and understand the value of what that really means. I want you just to, just to process that for and, and maybe you want to pause the video and even share a little bit with, with who you're watching with. But think of the, the value and the importance of the creator of the world, the Messiah, sending his Holy Spirit a portion of himself to live <coughs> inside of you. And what that really means. He was given all that he would need. David was given all that he would need. He understood the value of what he had. I want you to think of, of you and your spouse. This is for you. Look at that person, that beautiful woman over there, or that handsome, handsome, strappingly uh, young man, or whatever he had. Maybe, maybe he's balding like myself, or whatever. But, and, and, and look at their value. Remember their value. They are value. They have value. Turn and look at them and say, you have value. Remember their value. You know, when you got married, it says the two became one. <coughs> you became a team. Have you forgotten that? Have you forgotten that you guys are on the same team? You know, we, uh, I remember when, when we were just getting ready to have our firstborn son, uh, Nolan. We talked about what would happen if I ever had to make a choice between my wife and my child, heaven forbid, that would be the, the worst decision. But I always said, right from the beginning, I said, honey, if it ever becomes a choice, I'm picking you. We'll make another one. <laughs> we laugh and joke. <clears throat> but the reality is that we became a team. And she was everything to me. And the same thing for you and your spouse. They should be everything to you. You have to understand their value. You have to remember their value. <clears throat> Have you forgotten it? Do you still value your spouse? Do you value your spouse? Or do you treat them like someone you value? You know, sometimes we treat our, our clients or our business partners or our, our, our friends or, you know, our golfing buddies or, our, you know, sometimes we treat our coworkers even better than we treat our spouse. Shame on me. 
honey, forgive me. <laughs> but shit, think about this. Are you treating that person, your spouse, like someone that you truly value? See, it shouldn't just be about Valentine's Day, picking up a candy bar or chocolate or flowers or doing something special. It's about understanding uh, their love language, what they love, <coughs> and finding something to appreciate them. Value your spouse. Don't, do you take advantage of them? You see, I think one of the downfalls for relationships is that they forget the value of what they have and they begin to look for something else. They forget the value. Be careful you don't devalue your spouse. You know, I've taken my wife for granted at times in our marriage. Uh, she's, pretty, she's pretty quiet most of the time. I know maybe you don't believe me, but uh, she is pretty quiet most of the time. And, and she puts up with a lot. She has to put up with me. So uh, <laughs> that goes a long ways. And sometimes I take advantage of that. And uh, I mean, I can go for weeks and, and she might not say anything. <clears throat> because she's a nice person. <laughs> that doesn't make it right. And so this is what I'm saying. Don't devalue your spouse. Remember her value. Remember his value. Have you heard the phrase, a bird in hand is better than two in the bush? A bird in hand is better than two in the bush. I think one of the problems is when we begin to devalue our spouse or devalue people in relationships, then we start to look at other things to fill the voids that we need. We've forgotten that covenant a little bit. And not that saying you're going out and cheating on your spouse or whatever, but what I'm saying is we, we begin to look elsewhere for different things. Oh, you know, so and so they got such a great they have such a great marriage. I wish ours was like that. So and so, man, look at they have such a nice house. Nice car, perfect family. I wish ours was more like that. You see you see the problem that happens is you begin to look elsewhere and you've you've forgotten the value of what you have that I have an amazing spouse, that you have an amazing spouse, I hope. And if, if, if things are rough, remember the covenant. That, listen, there's good and bad. Things will be getting better. Remember her value. Remember his value. See, the same thing is also about the Lord. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is the part that he says, he's given me this. If I, if I truly believe the value of what God has done for me and what he promises to me, <clears throat> it should strengthen my relationship. And so here's the question. How is your relationship with Christ? Have you taken advantage of His grace? Now think about that. We say, okay, yeah, God loves me so much. He's going to save me, you know, but I'm not going to serve Him. You know, I'm, I'm taking advantage of His grace. I'm not serving Him wholeheartedly. I know there's things that I still have to get rid of that I don't want to. I still want to be me. Are you taking advantage of your, your relationship with Christ? You know, it's easy to remember that He will never leave us or forsake us. But if you want to strengthen that relationship with Christ, your walk with Christ as well, then we have to understand the value <coughs> of what we've been given. I say all that because we shouldn't forget. Christ is our portion. He is your portion. And I, and I challenge you to really think of the value of what that really means. All right, last one. 7 through 11. Uh, Psalms 16, verse 7. It says, I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will dwell securely. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forever. Here's the third one, and this may be the most fun one. I mean, I talked about the covenant and kind of what that looks like. And, and yeah, that can be kind of difficult because there are going to be tough times. And, uh, but remembering that you're going through life together with your best friend. I've talked about remembering their value and the importance of it. Now, this is where it really gets fun. He says in verse uh, 7, I will bless the Lord. Number three is remember to bless them. Bless your spouse. Put them first. You know... Think about what they want before you think about what you want or how it affects you. Imagine if every day, instead of you trying to say, bring me something, bring me a sandwich, 
you say, how can I serve you? What can I get for you? What can I do to make your life a little better today? You know what? It's been a long time. And for those of you that have been at home through this whole period of, 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 of COVID, it's, it's been one year. It's been almost one year. We shut down right in the first of March. And you know what? It has been exhausting. And I know for some of you at home, it's been exhausting. And as opposed to maybe you have cabin fever and, and are like, man, I need out of this place, start to look at the spouse and say, what can I do to bless you? How can I help you make your life better? And imagine if, if both of you started to do this and how your relationship would grow. <coughs> Could you outdo the other person and outserve the other person? You know, I think about that. Think of ways you can serve them, not the ways they can serve you. This is what Christ did for us. He came to serve. You know, the image of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. You know, that's the, that's the greatest act of serving that I can think of. The creator of the world, the savior of the world, the one and only son that God sent to save, die for their sins, <coughs> and save all those disciples, they should be washing his feet, right? They should be basically bowing down. What? Let us serve you. You're saving the world. You're saving me. You're providing eternal life for me. And what does Jesus do? He says, no, let me show you how to serve. Yeah, I, I created the world. Piece of cake. Yeah, I created you. <laughs> yeah, I can forgive sins. Let me show you. And he got down and he began to wash their feet. And he washed Peter's feet. And he washed John's and James. And then he washed Judas, the one who would betray him, the one that would turn him over to be killed, the one who would stab him right in the back, right? <coughs> And he washed his feet. See, that's the act of serving that we have to get to. When he talks about, hey, we need to remember to bless them. We need to remember to bless others. We need to remember to serve the way that Christ served. <coughs> I'm okay. I promise. That's a serving that we should do. That's a serving we should do for our spouses. Do you serve them? Do you just pick up the little things? Do you help with the dishes? Do you help fold the laundry? Bless them with what they love, not with what you love. Now, this is very important. Now, I'm not teaching the five love languages uh, today in, in different ways at different people, but, you know, I, um, you have quality time, spending time with them. You have gifts, you know, people that like to uh, receive things uh, and let them know you're thinking. You have acts of service so you can do projects for them that they're needing help with. You have uh, physical touch. Sometimes they just need a hug or hold their hands or, or okay, I, I don't kiss my wife enough. I know, I know. I, I got problems. And so, but you know what? Sometimes I have to kiss my wife. I get to kiss my wife. Don't tell her I said that. I know she probably won't watch this. So <coughs> it's our little secret, you know, and, and we think about the things. Bless them with what they love, not with what you love. Think of what they would want, <coughs> not just what you would want. Look at verse 8. He says, I have set the Lord continually before me. Enjoy their presence. As opposed to looking for, man, I got to go. I got to go hang with my buddies. I got tea time with this. I'm going to go to work. And I go to work a lot. Um, enjoy time with them. The other day, my wife, she's been doing a ton of, uh, she had a ton of Valentine's Day orders. And uh, I'm not the most artistic, and I'll be the first to admit. I like sports. I like music. Those are my gifts. <laughs> I can do this, too. Um, but artistically, <coughs> I'm a little more challenged. Uh, but I sat down and I helped her with her cake pops and she taught me how to make little ears for her little cake pops to put on because they were little dogs and a little nose and I sat with her and helped her out and not to say hey good job it's because I wanted to help her it's because I wanted to spend time with her and make her life easier and as you begin to think about those things how can I be with you Enjoy their presence. Take time to be with them, not just on the big days, like your bir the birthday and the anniversary and Valentine's Day, right? These, 
should be all year. You live with this person 365 days a year, all the time, right along with them on their next trip. Yeah, you, they gotta go to Sandpoint and bid something. Hey, can I come with you? I'm going to town for doctor's book. Can I, can I come with you? Let's, let's make a day out of it. I just want to spend time with you. Think about that. I just want to spend time with you. If you focus on blessing your spouse and spending time with them, I promise you, your relationship will grow stronger. Now, be very careful. Don't smother them. <laughs> we all we do still need a little bit of alone time. Uh, but spend time with them. And get this, the same has to apply with our walk with Christ. It has to apply. Have you ever thought about what God wants you to do? You know, so many, so many times we kind of get this idea of God that he's kind of like this little genie that we reread the Bible. We say, Lord, I need help with my throat. It, it hurts. It tickles. It keeps coffee. <coughs> Lord, Lord, I need this. I don't know how my foot hurts. Lord, Lord, I need this. I don't know how I'm going to pay. Lord, I need this. Lord, watch over this. You know how many? We get caught in that. No. Imagine if you say, well, what, is, what, is, what does God want me to do? What does he say in this book? He, want, he said he wants me to go and sh share what I've seen and heard. Okay. Okay. He wants me to go and, 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 and tell people that God loves them. He wants me to go pray for the sick. He wants me not forget about my brothers and sisters in Christ. He wants me to love my neighbor. Wow. Are we doing what God wants us to do? What things please Him? Do you know that God just wants to spend time with you too? You know God wants you to slow down everything you're doing and just spend some time with Him. You know, that's one of the things I love about prayer on Sunday night. We just... We just stop everything. We don't have any agenda. We just put on some quiet music and say, hey, be quiet before the Lord for an hour. Can you do that? When's the last time you were just quiet before the Lord? Just spend some time just enjoying being in His presence. Do you believe that God is with you everywhere you go? Keep that in mind. I don't know where you go every day. I don't know where you go all week, but remember, it's not just about Sundays. He's with you if you've chose to make Him Lord of your life. He's with you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. He's with you in the morning, with you at night, late at night, early in the morning. If you get up early, I don't know. <laughs> He's with you everywhere. This should be our lifestyle. You should enjoy life with your spouse. And I hope this encourages you to remember that. Value your spouse. You should value them. You should bless your spouse. And, the same, and it shouldn't be just today, Valentine's Day. Yeah, take her out, do something special. I'm gonna, actually my wife bought a uh, Airbnb for us and, and we're going there tomorrow because Valentine's Day was crazy. I'm super excited. Enjoy being around your spouse again. Enjoy being around Christ. The same should go through a relationship with Christ. Spend time with him. Do life, enjoy life with Christ. Yeah, there's gonna be good days, there's gonna be bad days. Enjoy it. Remember the value of what you've been given. Understand the power that you have with Christ. And begin to seek on what you can do to give, uh, what you can give Him as opposed to what He can give you. Find out how you can serve Christ, not how Christ can serve you. And I promise your relationship will grow stronger. If you work on these things, your relationship will grow and not just on Sundays. All right, I want to pray for you for three things. Thank you for spending time with me. I hope this encourages and bless you, but I have a few questions I want to ask you today. So, number one, if you've never accepted that covenant, I talked about just remembering the covenant that you have with Christ. It's like when you said, I do, to, to your spouse, right? <coughs> if you're not married and you're single, the rules are different, right? The, the, the whole playing field is different. Every, all the expectations are different. The same goes with your relationship with Christ. If you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never said yes to Jesus, that, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want you to be my portion. If you've never done that, or, or maybe you've just kind of drifted away and said, I need to rededicate my life to Christ. If that's you, I want to pray with you right now. Lord, I just pray for each of these, Lord, that, Father, that, that may have never, give, never asked you to be Lord of their life, Father, or have driven away, I pray right now that you just bring them back to you, Lord. But I pray that you come into their hearts. Lord, you be Lord of their lives. Lord, God, you forgive them of their sins, Father. And begin to show them what they need to do next. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible says if you pray a similar prayer like that, you just ask them to be Lord of your life. It says oh, the, the angels are rejoicing. 
And if you did do something like that and you want to get baptized, that's what's next. So, hey, uh, baptism, March 21st. All right, that's a side note. Number two, if you've forgotten the value of someone, and I would say, number one, look at that spouse right next to you. And if you've devalued them, I want to pray with you today. And not only have you devalued them, maybe you've devalued Christ in your life. You've taken advantage. You know that you've got to come back to him. You know that, that you've been taking advantage of his grace. I don't know what you've been doing, but if that's you, I want to pray with you right now. Father, I pray for each and every one, Lord. Lord, and, and I pray that relationships are strengthened right now, Lord. And relationships between husband and wife, Father, that, Lord, you begin to remind them of the value they have for each other, Father. Lord, and I begin to remind us, Lord, forgive us for taking advantage of your grace, Father. Bring us closer to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. And finally, the third one. If you've been struggling and thinking... Uh, with, with thinking, what can you do for me? And whether this is your relationship with your spouse, that you've become a little bit selfish, or if it's your relationship with Christ, saying, God, I just need you to do more. And you want him to help change this into, what can I do for you? How can I serve you? I want to pray for you, Father. <clears throat> I pray right now that you just humble our hearts, Father. Lord, and whatever pride we've put up, and whatever... Uh, fences we've built. Lord, I pray that you tear them down, Lord, and that we start finding ways to serve you. Lord, put on our hearts, Lord, how we can serve our spouses. Give us ideas of how to serve others, Father. And Lord, I pray that you show us what we should be doing to serve you. Lord, just give us a new fresh, a fresh vision, Lord, and, and, and heart, Lord, for others. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. Father, I pray that you just watch over each and every one here, Lord. Give us an opportunity, Lord, to share your love with someone else this week. Keep us safe and bring us back again next week. We ask all this in Jesus' name and everybody said, amen, amen. So thank you so much for being with me today. Have a great week and we hope to see you soon. God bless. Bye.